You've probably heard of quantum computing, but how many of us really understand it? Here is Tech at Work trying to simplify it for you, and I am Reema Tendulkar. The basic difference between a quantum computer and a regular computer is a classical computer uses bits. A bit can take on only two values, either a one or a zero. So everything from your tweets to your emails, pictures are essentially a long string of these binary digits. A quantum computer, on the other hand, uses quantum bits, which is known as qubits. And a qubit can take on numerous values, numerous possible values between 0 and 1 at the same time. Now think of it as a coin. A normal coin has head or tails. Now that is a bit which represents either 0 or 1. Think of qubit as a spinning coin, which means it can be in a state of both 1 and 0 at the same time. And the ability for um, a qubit, a qubit to take on multiple values, a value of 0 and 1 at the same time is called superposition. That is one of the key fundamentals of quantum computing. The other key tenant is entanglement. Now entanglement is a physical relationship between two or more qubits in which one qubit seems to know what happens to another, even when they are at a large distance apart. So in the case of that coin's example that I was telling you about, now normally the toss of one coin should have no bearing on the outcome of the toss of another coin. They are independent. But when there is entanglement, the two coins are linked, even if they're physically apart, which means if the first coin toss throws up ahead, the pot, probably the second one will always be ahead. So uh, the combination of superposition and entanglements are the key fundamentals behind a quantum computer. A superposition allows qubits to take on multiple values, while with the help of entanglement with every qubit that gets added to the system, the device's capabilities increase exponentially as compared to a classical computer, where if you add a bit, there is only a linear improvement. Quantum computer can deliver huge leaps forward in processing power. Now talking about a quantum uh, computing super processing power, let me give you another simple example to try and differentiate it. Now think of a mouse, it's trying to get through a maze. A computer will try one path at a time, rule it out and then go back to the starting point and try another path till it finds the correct path. But with quantum computers, you can process all the parts at the same time, which is what gives it extraordinary speed. Let me try explaining it with another example. Now, if tasked with looking for a needle in a haystack, a classical computer would be programmed to look through every single piece of straw until it reached the needle. A quantum computing could, in principle, browse through all the hay straws at the same time. So because a quantum computer can use qubits to run several calculations at the same time to find an answer, exploring many different avenues in parallel, uh, which is what gives it that speed. Uh, a quantum computer works on the principle of quantum mechanics. Now, and the reason we're talking about quantum mechanics is because molecules, atoms, subatomic particles all represent the properties of superposition and entanglement which are exhibited by qubits. So you and I are quantum systems. The particles in our body obey quantum physics. So if you try to compute what happens with all the atoms in our body, you cannot do it on a regular computer, which is where a quantum, quantum computer comes in. It can simulate the behaviors of the atoms and particles at levels which a classical computer cannot. You know, we're talking about big breakthroughs in areas such as chemistry, material science, logistical planning, such as in factories, perhaps even artificial intelligence. Companies are already experimenting with them to develop things like lighter, more powerful batteries for your electric cars and to help create novel drugs. Talking about the origin of quantum uh, computing, uh, Nobel-winning uh, physicist Richard Feynman is generally credited with first simulating physics with computers in 1982. But in the past few years, the concept has started to become more real. Google, IBM, Intel, Microsoft and a pack of startups are all building and testing quantum computing hardware and software. In 2019, Google claimed quantum supremacy. That is when a quantum computer performed a calculation which would have been practically impossible for a classical machine. So Google estimated that uh, the same calculation which the quantum computer solved would have taken a classical computer 10,000 years to complete. 
So there was a lot of back and forth on this particular claim. IBM, which is Google's rival, reported a few days later that the same problem could have actually been solved in a matter of two and a half days and not 10,000 years as Google claimed. But nonetheless, the fact that you know quantum computer beat a classical computer, it was a very significant milestone, which is what we call as quantum supremacy. Now, quantum computing has the potential to revolutionize technology. It can be used to solve what would have taken classical computers millions of years to solve. Now, um, you know, to just give you an example of the power of multiple qubits. Now, if we use 275 qubits, we can compute with more pieces of information than there are atoms in the observable universe. And the compression of computing time is what could, you know, which could have big implications in many use cases. Uh, but even using 275 qubits is very, very difficult. The best quantum computers today use 60 to 70 qubits and they do not solve real world problems. And it will probably be years before the technology is mature enough to be broadly practical. There are two key reasons why. A qubit is extremely fragile. Qubits are susceptible to interference. Even a slight change in temperature or any electromagnetic wave disturbance can cause errors. And for any meaningful complex calculation, a quantum computing would need millions of qubits, which would make the system more susceptible to interference and noise resulting in possibly wrong answers. The second uh, major reason is storage. Now, typically, quantum computers have to be cold, really cold. We're talking about temperatures of minus 273 degrees Celsius or slightly above zero degree Kelvin which is where our atoms stop moving, and this is a temperature which is colder than space. Billions of dollars have been poured into this particular field. Investors are getting excited, but quantum computing still has a long way to go before it can become useful. For now, it's a technology with great potential, but will it live up to its hype?